Hi guys, are you here from Blender Bros and this video is for beginners in Blender, we're gonna be talking about bullions, let's get started. So now, bullions in vanilla Blender are a bit of a pain and some of them are real pain, like for example inset bullions, but we're gonna be talking about all that in a minute. So I'm going to show you the basics in Vanilla Blender, all you need to know to get started. And also I will show you a little bit about how it works with add-ons, so hard ops and box cutter. So let's start with Vanilla Blender. I'm in Blender 3.2 Alpha, but it doesn't matter because it just works the same way in any Blender really. So I'm going to add a, a cube here. Let me just enable my screen cast keys. There we go. Shift A and add a cube, right? Now, if you wanted to cut this cube with another object, we're going to just use uh, another cube for this. You simply have to add it to a scene. So Shift D to duplicate it, place it somewhere here. And now we're going to be cutting this cube with this. So in the very basic vanilla, what you need to do is uh, you know, select the cube and you need to add a modifier to it, which is a Boolean modifier. So go here to the range and click on the Boolean. Now, what you need to do is you need to select an object you want to cut with. So click on this here and select an object you want to cut with. And you can see that it's been cut. So if I'm going to select this cube and go to local view with forward slash on a um, on the keyboard, you can see that our boolean is being applied here, right? And so now the moment where most of people get tripped over is that the fact that when they go to edit mode, right, uh, it's still a cube. It's not really a cube with a cut. Now, the reason for that is you need to remember that this is a modifier, which means you can still modify it. Okay, it's live. It's not applied. So you cannot see the geometry. If you're going to apply this, however, then you will be able to see the geometry. So, you know, that's how it works. Okay, cool. So now you can grab this cube and you can move it about, you know, to change this boolean and the way it looks. And it will update on this cube here because this boolean is still live. So these are the very basics of bullions. Now to make this operation a bit easier and also to make sure that this uh, cutter changes into a wireframe so it's easier to see through it, uh, what you can do is install an add-on called Bull Tools and that's a free add-on that comes with Blender. So go to Edit Preferences and type Bull here and you're gonna see Bull Tools, enable it, save preferences and you're good to go. Now, if I'm going to do the same thing, so let's just remove this boolean here, shift D, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the cutter first and then the object I want to cut and press Ctrl minus on a numpad. Now, if you don't have a numpad, you can always change this key maps, uh, the key mapping under preferences, go to uh, key map and under here you can turn boolean and go to slice and you can change this in here okay so you can see that now what happened is that first of all we didn't have to add all this bullshit here because it was automated and also our cutter is a wireframe which is really cool because now we can for example go to edit mode grab this edge press ctrl b and start playing with uh, this boolean start modifying it it's a little bit easier to see so this is kind of closer to add-on workflow, uh, but it's still not there yet because there are still things you need to do manually. But before we're going to talk about that, let's talk about other things and options in here. So now you can see different types of booleans, difference, union, and intersect. Now, if I'm going to switch it to union, it's going to be the union of them both. And intersect is a section between the two booleans, which means the area uh, they intersect, okay? Um, between the one another. So that's how it works. All right, so let's go back to difference. And these are the basics. Now there's one more Boolean that's kind of hidden, um, but I'll tell you why. Let's just shift that in here, okay? And shift select this cube here and press control forward slash on an numpad. Now you're gonna see an interesting thing. You can see that there is another object in here, uh, this one and this one. Now, this one is nothing else but the duplication of this original cube because when I start moving it in, you can see that it's actually quite big. This one is the same cube, you just simply duplicate it. Okay, so you can see this is a cube, the original cube, and this one is cube 003. Now, what are the modifiers? The modifiers, this one is intersect, but this one is boolean, uh, the difference. Now, the reason for that is because technically, this is an intersection between these two booleans, but it's been actually 
cut in a way that the section that is not intersecting is still visible. Okay, that's a slash. So it's kind of like an intersect boolean with the other part of the mesh being still visible because if I switch this to intersect, right, the proper intersect here, you will see that this mesh is going to disappear. Okay, so that's how slash boolean works. And now you got two separate objects that's really important that are affected by one cutter. Okay, the same cutter affects both objects. So if you want to apply this, you need to apply it on both objects. And funny thing happens that here when I'm trying to click apply, you can see that I need to actually make sure that the data of a single user is applied. And this data is actually visible in here. So you can either click here and, and clean it up or you can just simply, you know, do it from the drop down menu. So when you apply this, now everything is going to be peachy and, and both and both meshes basically are now separate meshes. OK, so that's how it works. All right. So that's a, um, you know, difference Boolean union intersect and uh, and slice. Now, if you would like to learn more about Vanilla Blender and how all these tools work together, uh, we have a free course for you. It's a really cool hard surface course and it brings you from the cube to a final model to a final render. So the whole processing, including rendering, even post processing of that render. So the whole process is included and it's free and you can get it from our website so just click on the link in the video description and enjoy these are the most common booleans you're going to be using but there's also another one called inset boolean and that one is an absolute bitch to do with vanilla so i'm going to show you with hard ups and box cutter i'm going to enable box cutter here with alt w and i'm going to run a box cut and when i'm going to press x three times that's an inset boolean so when it's live you can still even adjust you know the thickness of this um of this um inset here you could also switch it to outset if you want to um, but you can press b for bevels and you can do all kinds of interesting stuff with cutters in box cutter um, like i said you can switch it to for example outset boolean as well so pretty cool and you can also adjust solidification as well of it so interesting stuff uh, but uh, yeah in vanilla blender this is a little bit troublesome and setting this inset boolean requires a lot of different operations and uh, quite frankly it's pointless because it takes way too much time. This is why we use add-ons. Now, there are other things I want to talk to you about here in terms of vanilla booleans that are really, really important. So let's start. Control minus. Now, let's uh, talk about this bottom option here. Uh, there is a fast and exact. If I switch between them, nothing happens. You might be confused. What the hell is this about? Well, these are different algorithms of computing booleans. Blender defaults to exact, and quite frankly, I'm not sure why. Uh, because to be honest, I'll prefer to use fast because it's much easier on the system. If you're going to be using a lot of exact booleans and the bevel is going to be, you know, the mesh is going to be beveled, then you might be ending up with very low FPS in your viewport. So I would be switching to fast, to be honest, which is why when you <clears throat> when you work with um, box cutter, these booleans, uh, they are all fast by default, you see, because that's what you need. Now, when would you need this exact boolean? There's a very specific situation when you might want to need that, uh, especially when the uh, when the mesh is actually sort of Z fighting. So you can see that the mesh here occupies the same area in space on the Z axis, right? And Blender doesn't really know which one is on top, which one is on the bottom, which is why they kind of, you know, flashing. We call it Z fighting. Now, if I'm going to to select this and this and control minus it works because blender defaults to exact but if i switch to fast you see that problems happen and this is why you want to use exact boolean now exact boolean you need to use on the manifold mesh on the mesh that's watertight which means there are no holes in it there are no weird faces inside that is basically mesh without any issues which is why sometimes exact might not work even though you, you're thinking to yourself well it should be working but it isn't if it isn't, then simply check your mesh for issues, okay? And you can use for this a lot of cleaning tools. I actually have a video on cleaning tools. You can watch it on my YouTube. So this is basically, you know, booleans in a nutshell. But there are a few more things I'd like to give you some tips, okay? First of all, what you can do, you can start modifying your, um, your colors. So if I, for example, drop, you know, a loop here and start scaling it, you can see that my 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 cut it's my cut itself is gonna get you know modified same if i'm gonna start adding bevel in here for example i'm gonna end up with something interesting like this another thing that you're gonna notice is that uh, we are actually having a bit of a problem with shading the reason is 
that um, in vanilla blender what you need to do with each mesh so when you start you know modeling what you want to do is right click and shade smooth okay and then you want to go here and actually add auto smooth right if you're working with booleans bevels etc and now if i'm going to uh, add a new cube so i'm going to add a new cube which doesn't really um, have this smoothing effect. And uh, let's say I'm gonna run a bevel in here like this, and I'm gonna cut this cube with Control minus. You will see that the cube outside is actually smooth, because if I'm gonna run a bevel here, you'll see it's smooth, but this one is faceted. And the reason for that is because this cube is not being smoothed. So each time you add a cutter, remember to smooth it, otherwise you're gonna have a faceted mesh when you cut it. So this is a little bit annoying. You don't have to do this in hard ups and box cutter because mesh is being smooth and auto smooth automatically upon adding a cutter. Because look, look at this uh, option here, but I'm gonna start cutting, boom, the mesh gets smooth and auto smooth automatically, the same with a cutter. So if I'm gonna start adding a cutter and press B for bevel, I don't really have to worry about you know any faceted faces because everything is smooth from the get-go. So this is, a, you know, uh, an advantage. Another thing I would give you a tip on is to create a collection for cutters, because at the moment everything is in one collection. So what you want to do is select the cutter, right? Select the cutter, press M, go to new collection, type cutters, and then the cutter is going to be in a separate collection. And you can press Shift 2 to turn it on and off which is really convenient. And uh, the good thing about hard ups and box cutter is that it's been done automatically. So if I'm going to remove this and add a cube, watch this collection here when I'm gonna start cutting automatically, collection is being created for my cutters. Really convenient and um, you know easy to work with. Another thing it's important that when you're working with booleans, you wanna add a weighted normal modifier. That's quite important because it will allow you to shade your mesh better, especially when you're using stuff like bevels, okay? So let's just, uh, whoa, um, let's just add the three segments here and um, change the profile here to arc. And let's just decrease the size of it and maybe create more, more bevels here, more segments. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it, okay? So I'm gonna add a cube here, right? Scale it, move it in here, right? And I'm going to control minus, uh, and then just move it somewhere here and select this mesh, control minus. You will see that we're gonna get some weird shading eventually on the mesh, like for example here. And uh, let's say I'm gonna move this cube somewhere above, and you will see that here on the side, you, um, I don't know if you can see that on the left side here, uh, the mesh is being pulled in a very weird way. You can mitigate this by adding weighted normal modifier. So you, what you want to do is you want to go here and add weighted normal, and you want to keep that weighted normal at the bottom. Also, it's really important to maintain the order of modifiers. You see the shading problem here is caused by the fact that boolean is above the bevel. The boolean should be always above the above the bevel because first you cut, then you bevel, and then you apply weighted normals. So when you apply new boolean, okay, so I'm going to grab another cube and move it somewhere here and shade smooth and auto smooth, and I'm going to cut it, you'll see I'm gonna have the same problem. The problem is that Blender doesn't really sort the modifiers on its own you need to do it manually, okay? This is not a problem with Vanilla Blender. Whereas here, if I'm gonna, for example, add a bevel, so I'm gonna add a bevel to this, okay? And I'm gonna add weighted normals. So now you can see that I have Boolean bevel weighted normals. Look what happens when I'm gonna add a Boolean, okay? It's gonna get automatically added above the bevel. And this is fantastic because that's exactly how I wanna work. The same if I'm gonna add a mirror with hard ups, it's gonna get added before weighted normals. This is really important. Whereas in Vanilla Blender, if I'm gonna add a mirror here to this mesh, it's gonna go on the very bottom and I'm gonna have to move it above weighted normals. You see my mirror is in the bottom, that's a problem. I have to move it above weighted normals. So working with Vanilla Blender is a little bit annoying because you have to, you know, perform all these mundane tasks, which just, you know, steal a lot of time from you and time could be spent on something a bit more creative, like, you know, um, enjoying design. Uh, but you have to, you know, do all this maintenance bullshit here, which is really irritating. So now, if you would like to learn a bit more about hard ups and box cutter workflow, we have a free course for you. It's a really cool sci-fi terminal course where you're going to learn a lot about tools. It's really easy. It's for beginners. And you're going to teach you how to render your final model, also how to 
post process in Photoshop, how to create basically a portfolio ready piece. So if you'd like to learn more about it, there's a link to a free course in the video description. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.